Hey everybody, uh, this is our next video in our cooking series, Cooking with Francisco. Today we're going to do a wild rice bison pilaf. Uh, sometimes on our, our food boxes, some of the protein, we have bison. Um, some of the items we're going to use as well today are uh, carrots, onions. We have this uh, bag of dried fruit and mixed nuts that we get. So we're going to kind of go through what we can use with this as well. Um, so stay tuned. Today we're gonna use a, this is a winter squash. Uh, it looks like a pumpkin. It's not a pumpkin. This is called a amber cup squash. Um, and we have some other things that we get on a drop box. Carrots, onions. Um, the additions here, I have um, sage, but like the cooking type of sage. I have a green onions, which you can find everywhere. We're gonna be using our coconut oil from like the previous video that we had and some of the future videos where we're using this throughout. And one should last through the whole series. Um, also, we have some chicken broth that we're gonna be adding. Uh, today we might do a, a small dessert. What we will be doing a small dessert, we'll be baking some pears. We get a, a bag of pear sometimes on our, our uh, food box with other fruits and we're gonna keep things real simple and delicious today. So our uh, amber cup squash here, what I did was first you should always wash your, your produce. I scrubbed it really good, the outside of it, and then uh, I cut it kind of like a jack-o-lantern like you would a, a pumpkin. Um, if you have one of those, uh, those jack-o-lantern kits at home that you can get at, at any you know, local store, uh, those would be super helpful. Um, always remember in the, in the first series we did the rag underneath the cutting board because we do not want to be slipping around. This, uh, when, when we do hollow this out, make sure you use the right knife for the right job. I would use probably um, like a pear knife or a knife, even like a steak. Once you get in with the pear knife, a steak knife with the, with the teeth on there. Um, again, the, the jack lantern can't be perfect. And then go at a 45 degree angle so you can see the, the top here. We're able to put that back on. Uh, get the top cut out, pop that out. And then I, I use a spoon, I dug all the innards, just the same as a jack-o'-lantern. And we're gonna be using this as a cooking vessel today. So one of my favorite things about using um, uh, like squash and, and other vegetables as cooking vessels is you don't have to wash so many dishes after. So that's always a good. All right, so we're gonna start off. We're gonna uh, peel our carrot here, which is gonna be one of the ingredients going inside of our, our peel off. So when I peel a carrot, we have a, just a regular old vegetable peeler. Everybody has one of these in their drawer somewhere. Um, so this is the butt of the carrot, this tip. So we're gonna go up like this, look. And we're just gonna follow that through. Again, you should wash off your your produce, so I, I wash off all my produce that we have here, especially with the um, the COVID and all the other things floating around. It we don't want to take no risks there. All right, so we got our carrot all peeled up here. The um, the recipe with the portion size and everything we're gonna have that posted. Uh, so next we're gonna mince this carrot. We're gonna mince the onion. So we're going to take the end off the carrot here. I don't know if you guys do compost at home, but if you do, that's, uh, that's great. You should do it if you don't. So we cut the ends off here. So our carrots, so I'm going to cut it so it's a little shorter. Here we have about this size. And then what I'm going to do here, it's a round vegetable, which means there's a lot of danger if I would try to just cut it because it has potential to roll. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut side of it down like this. So we're gonna go down. So now I have a flat surface on there. So now it's solid. So it's not gonna teeter totter on me as I'm trying to cut it. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna duplicate that cut on all sides of the carrot. And I'm, I'm saving these here, I'm saving these. So now we're kind of, we're making like a, a square or, or a rectangle. So now we have our carrot rectangle here. Now we need to cut small strips out of here. And I'm tucking my, my fingers in here. And I'm working, you know, slow. Keep going slow with, with your knife. It's best to be safe and get the proper knife cut than it is to try to be fast. Speed will develop. When, once you learn the proper technique and you keep practicing it, practicing it, then you'll have speed and proper technique, which is, um, 
that's the main goal there. So now we have our little strips here, right? So now we're gonna take our knife. Now when I do this knife cut, I'm gonna keep the tip of my knife down on the cutting board and I'm going to do it like a rocking motion like this with the tip. Continue down, again, tucking the fingers. I am following my knife in my hand. It goes left, they're, they're, they stay together. So now a rock in motion. So I'm getting little, little strips here. You're gonna look like this, okay? So we're gonna go through our carrot. Don't worry about speed. Worry about getting the cuts safe and, and proper. The reason, especially with a hard vegetable, that you want um, uniform cuts is because then you have uniform cook time. If I had a piece this big and a piece this big, sorry, this big and this big, obviously this one's not gonna cook and this one's probably gonna overcook. Um, you don't want that. You want them all to cook at the same time. So that's, that's why you learn proper uniform cuts. So now we have our strips. I'm right-handed, you know, I hold my knife in my right hand. So now we're gonna turn them sideways like this and we're gonna go this way on the strips. So I'm, I'm kind of holding my pinky and my thumb, I'm holding the bundle together here, and I'm gently holding the top here. So now I'm following again with my knife. So we get our small dice here. So when I get towards the end, I, I slow up the knife towards the end because then I have, um, towards the end I have less to hold on to with this hand, so I really start to move slower. So next we're gonna be doing the same cut, but with an onion. So I cut my ends off, so the ends of the onion here. So I cut those off. I'll cut the other end off here. So now I have, you know, the flat surface. So now I'm gonna flat side down here, I'm gonna cut it in half going down. That's the safest way to do it. So go down, so now we have our halves. I'm gonna take the whole outer layer off. So I'm gonna put that in the bowl here. Do the same thing to the other side. So now we have you know, a nice safe working area. So I'm gonna do it right here is I'm gonna pull my cutting board just slightly towards me along with my rag. I want it kind of at the edge of the table here. Um, so now, so I have my, my knife here. This is the heel, this is the tip, right? So I'm gonna hold the onion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go 80% into the onion. So I'm not gonna cut it all the way through. I'm gonna cut it most of the way through. But I'm not gonna put it here and push. I'm gonna go from the heel and I'm gonna move to the tip in one motion like this. So I start in the top of it, heel, tip, right? Go 80%, I go down a little more, heel, tip, right? Now I have it cut this way, so now I'm turning it this way. So my cuts are facing me. Now I'm gonna put the knife this way, and depending on how big you want your cut, that's how far you, you go from each other there. But I'm not gonna cut all the way through, I'm gonna go 80%, so I'm going this way. So 80%, 80%, right? So I go this way. When I get to the bottom, I move to the end, I move my hand, I go slow again. So now my knife cuts. So now my cuts are this way. Now I'm gonna aim them to the right of me with the knife. So now I'm going this way. So the intact part of my onion is to my left, my non-dominant hand. So now I'm gonna go however far you want your pieces to be. So I want them to be the same size as the carrot. That's how far my knife is gonna work here. So go down now, right? And you get your small dice that way. And then when you get to the end, you go a little slower, right? So now you have your small dice on your onion. So we're gonna just very carefully cut that in half and we're make it the same size as those there. The end we keep it intact, otherwise when you try to get your proper cut, it, the onion's gonna fall apart on you. And if you didn't want to cut this end, you don't have to. You could save it for soups. You, you can put it aside for you know something else that you're gonna you're gonna make. All right. So we got our carrots, our onions here. 
Now we're gonna move on to some of the other ingredients that we're gonna cut. So this here is sage. This is cooking sage. So this is not the stuff you're gonna smudge with at home. Um, so this knife cut here, I'm gonna clean my knife. You always want a nice clean knife. Again, I'm wiping from the opposite side of the blade, never wipe this way. So when you pick out leaves, basil, sage, um, mint, you always pick a big leaf and that's gonna be your base leaf here. So I'm gonna put my biggest leaf down. They're roughly about the same size. So I'm gonna put my bigger leaf down. I'm gonna put my other leaf directly on top of it, aiming up at me. So like this. Then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna roll them up. So it's all rolled up here like a cigarette. And um, so it's rolled up, they're together, and I'm holding them here. And I'm, as I'm holding them, I'm tucking my fingers in. Now I'm gonna go this way with my knife. Tip stays down, same kind of rocking motion we used earlier. And we're gonna go this way. And this is kind of like, a, it's gonna look kind of like confetti when you're done. This is called a chiffonade. Very simple, very simple. Don't let the name intimidate you. So we're gonna chiffonade our sage. All right, and then we're gonna put our sage aside here. Then we're gonna cut some green onion, and again, the, the portion sizes we're gonna we're gonna post. I, I pull these out of my garden, so they're a little all over the place. So to get the, I'm gonna fold these up. That way, when I cut through, you know, I'm cutting multiple, not just cutting in individual pieces. If that's what you're comfortable with, that's what you're gonna do when you first start learning how to cut things. You do what's comfortable and what's safe. So I got them all bundled up here. So we're gonna do the same rock in motion. We're gonna thin cut these, thin slice these. Green onions. Following my hand with the knife. When I get close, I just kind of adjust to where I wanna be so I'm comfortable. Now I'm going real slow towards the end here. And then we're gonna incorporate that into our sage. All right, and we'll continue the bison wild rice peel off. All right, so we got a ground bison here. When you get it on your um, your box order of bison, you get a pound. This recipe here, I'm using a half a pound. Um, so you can adjust the recipe to your desired amount of portion sizes. Our coconut oil here, we're just gonna, very important, we get the pan hot first. So the pan's hot, then we oil it because oil has a smoke point which it breaks down. So we're gonna oil the pan here. We're gonna put our ground bison in here. So now, bison's a very lean cut of meat. It doesn't have a lot of fat content to it, which it tends to get uh, dry. So this method here that we're, we're gonna be adding a liquid to it, it's gonna be perfect so it won't dry out. Also, I, I pre-cooked wild rice ahead of time. We're gonna get the proper portion on the wild rice. We, um, wild rice is one of the easiest rices there is to cook. It's actually an aquatic grass. You just cover it with a liquid that you wanna use, uh, bring it to temperature. You, you should always wash your rice. Wash your rice, cold water, always use cold water. Just cover the rice with the liquid, bring that to a boil, bring it onto a simmer, and, it, and you wait until it's soft. So it's about this, your, your, your rice will be soft. Um, and then you just let that set aside there. So at, at this point, my rice is, is cooked. I did that ahead of time today. Uh, I did put a little onion in there because I had a little left over, that's up to you. I didn't season the water with anything, it's just cold water. So I'm breaking down my bison here. You want to make sure that whenever you ground something, if you're making chili, if you're if you're making hamburger helper at home, you want your ground meat to be broken apart, distributed pretty evenly. You don't want a, a big piece and a small piece, the same as the vegetables that we cut. You want them the same size so the cook time is the same because you'll have a, a, a big piece that's underdone and you'll have a small piece that's overdone. So we're gonna avoid that. The nice thing about having a nice lean cut, like this bison, it breaks apart very easy. 
So when there's bison, so it's starting to brown here, right? Starting to brown, we're getting some, getting rid of that pink color. So it's it's almost cooked all the way through. When it's almost to this to the point of being cooked, we're gonna add our carrots and our onions at this point. So I'm gonna add these here. Because we just wanna sweat these with the um, with the meat. So the term sweat means we don't want it to caramelize. Caramelize means brown. So you're bringing the sugars out in there, you know, caramel, like caramel sugar. So we want it to sweat, which means you just want it to get warm and slightly uh, translucent. If you caramelize it, it will drastically change the flavor of your dish. If that's what you're looking for, that's perfect. But today we just want to sweat the vegetables a little bit. Plus they do add a little moisture content into the, the bison here. Super healthy. Best way to season things, I believe, is with herbs and vegetables and instead of adding a whole bunch of uh, other seasons like salt and you can watch your sodium intake. All right, so you can see everything's broken apart nicely. Everything's starting to sweat here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shut the heat off on everything and, and we're gonna Continue over here with our with our amber cup squash. All right, so we got our, our bison all ground with our carrots, our onions here all sweated. I gotta have them in a bowl because we're gonna be mixing everything. I have the uh, wild rice that I cooked earlier. I have one cup of that to a half pound of bison. Again, we're gonna post that. So at this point, we just kind of mix everything. So we're gonna put everything in our bowl. This bag of dried fruit and nut mix um, from the food distribution here, it'll kind of give you an option and everything here is to your liking. If you don't really care for it, don't add it. So we're gonna do one cup of this. Pretty pretty simple stuff here. There's almonds in here. Almonds, cherries, raisins, and cranberries. All the best things in life. So we're gonna add those in here. We're gonna add our chiffonade sage and our nicely sliced green onion to the mix here, right? I'm wearing a glove, so I'm gonna mix this up. It smells like fall time, is what it smells like. Um, I have a roasting dish here. This is called a, uh, a two inch half pan, I believe. So we're gonna, quarter pan. So we're going to I have a vegetable stock that I'm gonna be adding into the squash. First, we're gonna explain some of the squash here. So I'm gonna put the squash in my, my roasting pan. So that's gonna go inside there. We're gonna take the jack liner and top off. And then we're gonna use a coconut oil. What we wanna do is add a fat to the inside and outside of this coconut oil. Our spray oil here. So I'm gonna spray a little bit on the inside, spray on the outside. And we're gonna rub that around. Gives it a nice color on there. So we're gonna fill our squash here. Pretty good on, a, on the portion sizes. So the two cooking, the rice cooking methods is the uh, pilaf and the risotto. So the pilaf is what we're gonna do here is when you take your rice and you add a stock all at once and you bake it. So we have a vegetable stock. If you have any type of stock in your refrigerator in your, or in your cupboards, uh, chicken will work, beef will work. So we're gonna fill the, the squash about a quarter of the way with the stock. I have about two cups here of vegetable stock that I had. So we're gonna pour that in there. And then the lid here, make sure we get some coconut oil as well in the lid. Everything's getting kind of slippery over here. We're gonna put this on the top here, however that's cut. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up in, in tin foil. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. Uh, this squash here, what a small, medium-sized squash. This is gonna take at least an, an hour, 45 minutes. Um, we want the squash to get slightly soft. It, again, if, if you eat it before then because you're super hungry, uh, everything is already ready to eat. 
but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take tin foil, we're gonna wrap it in tin foil, we're gonna bake it for an hour, then we're gonna uncover it and we're gonna bake it for the rest of the way uncovered. Make sure that's sealed. I cut off a little much, it's fine. As long as it's sealed properly. So we got our, because we want to steam that to help cook the outside the squash. Because we, if, if you do let it get soft, you know, then it becomes a part of the meal opposed to just digging everything out. So we're gonna throw this, we have our oven preheated here. We're gonna throw this in the oven. While that's in the oven, we're gonna start preparing our dessert. All right, for our dessert here, we're gonna be baking some pears. Sometimes we get pears in on the food distribution box. Again, wash these, cold water. So we're gonna be putting the pear up right here in our knife, rag under the cutting board. We're gonna be cutting it down the center this way. So I kind of use the center of my knife because that's just the strongest part there. So we have our pear in half. So it's rounded on the bottom. So it kind of teeter totters. What we're going to do is just cut a little small piece off the bottom to make a little flat surface. So I just take a small little piece off here, just like this. So now it's flat, it stays put. So today I have a mixture of uh, walnuts. I have some roasted pumpkin seeds that I had that actually was gifted to me. So we're gonna take a spoon. If you have a lemon baller at home, that's ideal. But if you don't, that's fine. So we're gonna be scooping out here the seeds, the core part of it here. We're gonna kind of make a, like a canoe without taking too much of the pear out. We just want to kind of make it so it holds, holds a little bit, you know? So like that. All right, so we got our little pear canoes here. So now what we're gonna do is honey. If you have agave nectar, that works as well. I'm gonna put the honey on them first. Reason being is because now it's gonna act as a binder. So if I put the nuts on there first, they have the tendency to move around. So honey first, and they're gonna kind of grab onto whatever I use. I'm also gonna build it on a uh, my bacon sheet that I'm gonna use. So honey on. So no artificial sugar is going on here. There we go. So we have our binder on the bottom here, our mixed walnut toasted pumpkin seeds. So you can see everything is kind of sticking there. That's exactly what we want. This is a great, uh, you know, let, let kids build their, their own. And so there we go. So what we're gonna do now is I have a, um, like a cheese grater. Uh, we have a cinnamon stick. If you don't have a cinnamon sticks at home, you, you can use, you know, uh, pre-grated cinnamon, the powder. So we're gonna grate some fresh cinnamon on here. It smells like Christmas. Got our cinnamon on here. So now we're gonna throw these in the oven. These take about a half hour. So if we're gonna pair them with the um, with with the squash and bison wild rice pilaf, we're gonna wait till there's a half hour left on that cook time. Then we're gonna kind of pair it so they they come out at the same time there. Or you can time these while you're eating so then they come out as the dessert afterwards. There we are. All right, so we have our bison wild rice pilaf here, our dessert option here, the, the baked pear with walnuts and roasted pumpkin seeds with honey. So you, you can bring this right to the table as is and everybody sit down. Again, at Thanksgiving, this is our, our dinner piece here. So we take the lid off and we serve it. When you, when you serve it, we kind of scrape the insides a little bit and uh, there you are. All right.
right, Kanani and I will see you again cooking with Francisco. Thank you very much. Uh, more cooking videos to come in our little series here. Thank you, I, I really appreciate it.